So welcome to an extremely different Artist Opus tutorial. Games Workshop have dropped from the most exciting releases and different releases in a long time, actually. Of course, I'm talking about Legion Imperialis slash Epic. This is at a completely different scale to what many of you will ever have painted at and what some of you might not have painted for a couple of decades. Future Byron here, stick around until the end of this video, we've got something brand new. I'm going to be analysing my own minis to show you where you can cut the most corners in your epic painting. Along with our rules, that should give you everything that you need to be able to achieve the best result you can in whatever time you've got available. And it's something new for us. We put quite a lot of effort into this one, so hopefully it's been worth it for you. Also note the XS Plus and Small Plus, two of the five brand new Series D Plus brushes are being used a lot in this. They're perfect for epic and they're brilliant for infantry painting as well. We've had a lot of variety in the range. Links to those down below. Let's jump back to House Byron, who's also really cold. I think I'm just cold for the rest of the year now. Manchester is freezing. I think that getting the vehicles right is the most important part of making this kind of work, and it's where you should be putting most of your time, but it's also perhaps where it's easiest to make a few basic errors. In this video, we're going to be outlining how to not make those errors, what steps you can skip, and there is a lot you can skip a lot, how it's actually more forgiving than painting normal Warhammer, and just what you can do to really kind of upscale your army if you want to spend a little bit of extra time on it. All of this is going to be beginner friendly and all of it is going to be scalable. You'll be able to take however much time and experience you've got and apply it to these models and get a really effective result that you're pleased with. Regarding the infantry, it's as important to base the infantry well as it is to paint the infantry themselves well. If we apply some maths to these miniatures, there's the miniatures, there's the base. The miniatures are going to be the focus, but how much of a percentage of that entire space is the base, it's lots, it's a huge amount. So on the presumption that we're base coating, washing, and maybe highlighting the infantry and giving them a good base, what's gonna be pulling the attention in the army? It's the large vehicles, large, that classifies as large somehow. It's the larger than the infantry vehicles. They've got large side panels. They've got flat areas where you could have a transition. They've got space for transfers or freehand or masking, scary, scary, scarier. They're not scary, we'll cover those soon. And they're really what's gonna pull a lot of the attention in an epic army. A major point in this tutorial that I'll probably bang on about too much is that this scale is actually more forgiving than you think. It's all about increasing contrast, maybe highlighting edges to make a smaller thing more readable. So by readable, I mean it's easily appreciated and it's easy to tell where one part stops and the other part begins. So with that in mind, we can skip a lot of steps. Rather than going one, two, three, four, five, you could just go one, three, five, maybe you could go one five and pop a wash in at the end. High contrast between one area starting and one area finishing is really, really kind of essential for being able to see what's going on in miniature. If you take too many stages to get from here to here, they're probably all gonna get lost. Obviously, if you're painting for Golden Demon, ignore this, you're probably not watching it anyway. But for getting a good, effective army done, you can skip a huge amount of steps and you should be going for high contrast and solid readability. When I'm talking about contrast here, by the way, I mean contrast between dark to light. Contrast is king on these, not that contrast. If you are using that contrast and if you're using washes or kind of speed paints or all, all the over techniques, don't swamp your minis. Take care, thin them more and probably do it in two steps rather than one. It's very easy to pull in grills or tank tracks. It's gonna look really bad and very, very obvious because one blob on a normal mini is so much of a percentage of it, one blob on a tiny mini like this on the top half is going to be like 10% of that mini and it's going to be really obvious when it's happened. With that in mind, we're going to be doing a quick transition, stippling, airbrushing, whatever you want to do, and they'll be carefully washing afterwards, kind of tie things together, carefully washing. Okay, let's rock into our seven rules. We've had our general principle of high contrast and being more forgiving. I've got four pillars that you need to hold in mind for having your vehicles look good. The first is a transition on side panels or top panels. And what I mean by that is, let's say you're an Imperial Fist vehicle. It's okay that mine's not moving quality. Rather than being light yellow all over, go from a light yellow here and on the side, maybe stipple down to a slightly darker, deeper orangey yellow at the bottom or airbrush it or use weathering or whatever. But having a transition within your flat colored sections will make your painting look better very, very fast. The next one is high contrast, we've already touched on it. You wanna be able to see what's going on in these tiny miniatures at whatever scale it is. That could be contrast between your minis and your bases. And very often that's gonna be contrast between the metallic areas and the colored areas of your vehicle. If you're a bright vehicle, Imperial Fist again, to use that example, maybe your metallics should be darker and vice versa. If you're a dark vehicle, maybe your metallics should be lighter or maybe you wanna put in a glowing element or something like that. 
The next one is freehand transfers or masking. Again, they're striking, they're readable. Transfers in particular are a way to get very, very precise details without having to manually paint them. We'll be covering some techniques about all of those uh, coming up soon. You don't need to worry as much as you think though. You definitely don't and they are magic and they are cheaty good. Transfers are incredible. The last of the cornerstones is weathering, chipping, taking your basing elements up the tracks of your vehicle, that type of stuff. You don't need to be very precise with it, but at a small scale, it's going to work wonders if your tracks look old and used or the bottom of your mini looks weathered or the front of your mini looks chipped, that type of stuff. They do not have to be done to scale. Anyone who's going to waste their time trying to paint these minis with their weathering bits to scale has thousands of hours on their hand. I applaud you. This is not for us in this tutorial. And don't beat yourselves up if you can't make your scratches look tiny and appropriately scaled because it would be impossible to, basically. So the second rule is some quick notes on assembly. Touching on the early part of the video, you got to be realistic about how unforgiving this scale is going to be with assembly. So you're going to be in one of two camps and whatever camp you're in, you're just going to have to get used to seeing other people's models with viewable tabs on them and some gaps. So camp number one is you're going to spend a long time trying to get things perfect. It's going to be quite hard. You're going to have to take your time. It's up to you whether you want to do that or not. Camp two, just be realistic at what is achievable at this scale. Some of the tabs are actually facing outwards um, and areas where you have to get a completely flat bond, sometimes you're gonna end up with stuff like this. We'll show some fairly unflattering views of the sides of my miniature. Pick a course, it's overall impression that matters and don't beat yourself up if you can't get it perfectly. You're gonna have to consider your miniature in multiples with maybe decals on and stuff that pulls the eye on a terrain board your tiny assembly mistakes probably won't matter there. And I don't think you should worry about them. Rule three is several rules again, which I know, but it's your must do's and must do nots, must don'ts, must do nots. Anyway, must do not, do not prime your model heavily. It will f***ing ruin it. Sorry for swearing there, but it's important. These models are small for the same reason that we're not going to be swamping it with contrast. If you dwell on your model while priming from a can or even priming with airbrush, you're going to fill in details and it's going to be extremely obvious. You need those details to be there so you can use texture based techniques at a smaller scale and have the model help you paint it easily. If you fill them in or swamp them or you base coat heavily by hand, it's going to be really obvious what's gone on. Exactly the same as our contrast. Be patient, two thin coats. So if you're spraying, we've got a video on spraying, by the way, check it out. Shake your can, make sure it's warm, make sure your miniature is not dusty, all the normal stuff. And when you're spraying it, Start on one side of your miniature, finish on the other, and never stop moving. You're not doing that. You'll swamp your details. So don't do that. The must do's are quite simple, really. Number one for me, a must do is have it be easy to hold your, mod your model. You're never going to need to see the bottom of this. Stick something there if you don't have a holder, or make something yourself with some blue tack, or buy something. Um, being able to get underneath your model, not for painting the underneath, but for accessing different angles, is going to be quite important at this scale. And also, I don't normally care about thumbprints and getting, you know, greasy hands on a model. You're going to be holding all of a model. So unless it is a convenient turret area that's going to get filled in with another piece or something, you probably shouldn't be handling these models too much whilst painting them yourself. You must do as far as color selection go. Once you've picked your color that your models are going to be, you should be considering if it is a strong and potent color. If it is, great. Still keep your coats thin. Take a couple of steps. If it is a weaker color, maybe go over a white primed base or a lighter primed base to give that color an easier job of coverage and be willing to do several steps, several thin coats. Again, it's, it's about not clogging those details. Quick note on the metallics here. If your metallics are not the main event of your vehicle, if it's not a metallic vehicle, I think like one or two steps is gonna be enough. Start slightly darker, one lighter dry brush, maybe just on the top parts or the hitting the edges or something like that. If it's not on the entire body of your vehicle, that is probably enough steps. Maybe you put some washes down, with some weathering or something like that. Okay, rule number four, blocking in is shit. I'm getting really sweary in this one, aren't I? Sorry, Ian. Um, so there's no avoiding this. Uh, there isn't a way to fix it or to kind of get rid of it entirely. If you struggle with your attention span, especially after you've done the hardest bit like me and then you get finickety with blocking in, you just got to do it. Know that it will help your miniature look good and you can mix steps rather than going, often you would be blacking in, so you'd black in and then you put silver down if it was a larger tank or something like that. Here it's smaller, you can mix a strong black with a strong silver, get it in one step and then maybe wash it. So do whatever you can to speed it up. 
concentrate and don't get kind of sloppy on it because you will be punished for it. It's worth doing it and separating those areas and putting those tank tracks in and stuff like that will really help. Follow reference as well. If you can't work out which bits are meant to be what color, just get a picture and put it behind you on your desk or look at the box or something like that. Okay, so stage number five is your freehand element. This could be one of three things. This could be freehand, manually painted, scary, intimidating, I know. It doesn't have to be fancy at this scale. It could just be a stripe. It could be decals or transfers. Look incredible at this scale, really, really good. Or it could be masking or, you know, kind of using a stencil somehow, that type of stuff. Or just doing a two-tone paint scheme and trying to paint a line and then have one half one color and one half the other color. These are all gonna be really striking and there's a couple of things that can make them way more forgiving. If you're freehanding the stuff that I just covered about blocking in and using a potent paint is very, very true. Uh, remember that you can cover problematic areas of your model if you've made a mistake already. That's really, really useful. And put them somewhere where you're gonna give yourself an easier job. So if you've gotta go over three different heights of a panel, speaking from personal experience here, that gets pretty hard. I don't know why I'm holding up something this small. Here's a picture of the rear end of my tank that I painted for the white scars. It's pretty hard to go up and down those steps and to consider the angles of the triangles. Could have masked it maybe and just filled in the gaps, but I didn't, so I made that harder for myself. Pick an easy area or pick a really obvious striking area and then take your time and do a good job on it. All of these should be done as early as possible in your painting scheme. And the reason for doing this is if you're doing weathering or chipping or anything else like that, you can put several stages over the top, washes, weathering, chipping, blah, 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 and they'll help harmonize them with the rest of your vehicle. Especially if this is a transfer and it's got that bit of a shiny finish on it, you can put several stages of washing or glazing or weathering or pigments or anything over it. And each one of those is gonna tie it in more with the kind of overall look of the rest of it. And it won't look like a shiny square with a picture on it. It'll look like there is a decal. Um, it won't look like there's a decal, sorry. It'll look like you freehanded it, which is obviously the idea. So another tip with decals or transfers is to pop a varnish down over the top of them. Again, it's just about harmonizing it with the area that it is over. Make sure they're fully dried. Be patient when using them. You can use a microsol or microset or other stuff like that. But as long as you put several stages over the top and the finish on, if it's decal, non-decal, if the finish here, shiny or not finish, is the same as the finish here, it will tie in super well the rest of your vehicle. If you've also scratched it in the same way, weathered it in the same way and grimed it up in the same way, it's gonna be barely decipherable that you used uh, a cutout there rather than painting it on yourself. Hold your breath, put a couple of good minutes in and don't try and get it perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect. Overall impression is all that matters. Number six, again, something we've already touched on, but we really need to drive home in this. You don't have to use hundreds of stages, but maybe it's worth repeating the stages that you're doing. So for example, if you're weathering, rather than going from like one mix to another to another, or you're doing a side panel and doing like 20 different colors, um, you can do the same step and just repeat it. So if you're weathering something and you've got a brownie mix, you can dilute it, just do it once on a larger area, once again on a smaller area, once again on the very bottom near the tracks or something like that. You don't have to change the mix or anything, just dilute it, repeat, go carefully. Be careful with the steps that you've got but you don't need to do many more stages. The most that we've done on any stage of our vehicles is start very light, which is just our base coat, stipple light, stipple dark, wash. You can weather afterwards or whatever, but it's up to you. Make sure the steps you're doing are done correctly. You don't need hundreds. Do you know that you might be doing an army though or something? So especially if you're doing a test model, you might have to do this like 50 more times. Pick something that is appropriate for the scale of the project that you've got going on, your aims and what you find rewarding. Okay, so your final one is batches. This is super easy. Paint your stuff in batches. Do it all at the same time. If there's steps that you prefer to do separately because you just enjoy them or you find them intimidating and you wanna do the freehand on each tank separately, go for it. But paint your dudes in batches. It'll go so much faster. And I find one of the nice things about doing batches is I feel like it's okay for me to spend longer getting my mixes right and stuff like that because I'm applying them to three things rather than just doing one thing at once. Paint them in batches, you will be rewarded. All right, so appearing on screen now are some bases. We've got a cool one, we've got a warm one. They're super simple. They've been done with two colors each and an optional white step. And very much like the rest of this video, it's a clear representation that you don't need a lot of steps. We're gonna get there with a little bit of patience within what we're doing, but we don't need thousands of colors or anything like that. Also, much like the rest of the tutorial, if it goes wrong, you can slap a wash down, which we did. It looked great. Some masking and some kind of uh, yellow road markings 
or chevrons or something like this would look amazing on these bases. I do recommend you do your bases in batches. Be willing to be open-minded and kind of figure things out. It is absolutely fine if they go wrong. Incidentally, uh, the tanks that are appearing now and the footage that is appearing now is me panel lining the tanks before putting the contrast down. This is super sneaky and super efficient and very forgiving. So my tank was primed white, I gloss varnished it, and I put a sepia down on it, and then I just removed it with a cotton bud, Q-tip if you're American, leaving it in the recesses. It does not have to be neat, it's a general approach. You can dot stuff back in if you delete it too easily. And then because you're gonna put your contrast over the top, you'll push any wobbly edges or whatever to the back and you get a general impression of those lines and it's really, really powerful. Okay, let's have a little look at my tank, right side, which is the fancy side, and left side, which is the simpler side. And I'm gonna run you through what I think was worth it that I did and what I would do if I was gonna take an army level approach to this tank. Okay, so we can see clearly that one's more weathered with like fairly delicate weathering that I did pretty carefully uh, by hand and the other one hasn't been weathered um, as in chipped. I'm talking about here the chipping on the edges. It does look really cool and personally I just enjoyed it. I got a lot of satisfaction from it, but that adds up time-wise. So that would be the last step that I would do maybe on an army because I don't know whether it would be worth doing on 15 of these or not. The darker panel lines are absolutely worth it. They really help with it being very, very readable as is the stark contrast between dark metals and um, the light. Uh, yellow of the rest of it. So my metallics have got a little bit chunky and I think that's because the white primer is difficult. It's just one of the things that's gonna happen with white primer every now and again. You can use a thicker layer of metallics initially to kind of smooth things out and I probably should have done that actually looking at it. Something that's worked extremely well and was worth it on every level, I think was stippling the top of the barrels and stippling the vents on the side of the vehicle. Bright yellow vehicle, dark sooty black, I use coal black, from um, Monument Hobbies, which is one of my favorites. Across an entire army, that would be really noticeable and I absolutely think it was worth it. My attempt at weathering the barrels, maybe not quite so successful or worth it in my opinion. And I think in retrospect, because the stippling and dry brushing of the kind of sooty weathering worked so well, I just do that on the end of the barrels and it would probably be enough. Hopefully Ian can pop another shot in now, it's kind of chopped out of the angles for that. Doing your windows a light color and having those little spots, whether they're red or orange, or I just used athematic blue over white here, is so worth it. Henry's done that really well in his personal army uh, for Epic, check that out in the color paint videos. Final note, rivets. If you dry brush carefully, they will get picked out on one of the dry brushing steps and they really, well, they really will help things pop. So that's worth doing. Stippling, kind of um, weathering as in uh, dirt weathering, not chipping weathering at the bottom of your vehicles. You can be uh, probably a bit more aggressive with it than I was here, and I think it'll work out absolutely fine. I would really recommend trying out pigments. They are so efficient at this scale, and they're really forgiving. And if you've already done a varnish or something, things don't go according to plan, you can just kind of wipe them off. Yeah, I think that's about it, an army level. Let me know what you guys think you would do at an army level, what kind of approach you're taking, or if you've got any questions about efficiency techniques and stuff like that. I think these models are actually hugely fun to paint. I had a really good time doing this, so maybe we'll see some more on the channel, but I might be going to a, uh, an Imperial Knight next with a new extra large, extra, extra large D. Do check out the new brushes below. There'll be a link. Thank you very much for watching the video.